Hi folks, I'm Ian Baker and today we're going to go over the 2020 Shasta 310K. This is a triple bunk model, you don't have any slides in the back, but you do have the super slide here in the main living area, which of course gives you a nice big walkway through here and it also has the U-shaped dinette. Starting off on the kitchen, you'll see the upgraded countertops. This is a thermal foil countertop rather than the T-mold, so you don't have the uh, molding popping off around the corners. And it also allows you to undermount the sink, which when you do so, kind of gives you a little more of a flush mount cover. I mean, it's not truly flush, but it is still very usable. You don't have to worry about this wiggling all over the place as you're trying to use it for prep space. Of course, this is a cutting board as well. I always recommend using the bottom side or at least the same side for cutting. That way you have one side that can stay on top and look nice. High rise faucet here, uh, well, kind of, you know, I mean, it, it comes up, but then it comes back down quite far. I uh, would like to have seen it, you know, kind of stop somewhere up here. It still, you know, gives you the, uh, some decent usable space there, but just kind of an, an odd choice for a faucet in my opinion. Uh, taking a look at the back wall, you will see two electrical outlets. So you have space for your toaster, blender, whatever else you need. Uh, you have this uh, backsplash here. You know, it's, it's a stick-on kind. It's better than just the straight wallpaper, at least for the cleanup. Looks decent, you know, kind of trying to pull in the browns a little bit there. Uh, taking a look right underneath that is your three burner cooktop. This is the Greystone brand. As I mentioned, recess the glass cover there, three burners, the knobs light up just like you're used to seeing on the Furion models. And then underneath is the oven. Uh, so that's way if you need to bake anything, you have the capability to do it. Underneath that, the thing I like about this is the fact that you have enough space for a trash can. There is still a shelf here, but it's a ways back. So if you're able to sneak a small trash can in there, you can do so. I, I love when manufacturers are able to do that. I think they nailed it with that. Coming over to this side, two full extension ball bearing drawers. You have to have at least one to make a functional kitchen, in my opinion. The second one is uh, almost, almost as crucial because it gives you a spot for like, you know, your uh, dish towels or hot pads or some of your bigger utensils. So I like the fact that they have the second one there. Uh, right up top here, you will see your control panel. Also storage going across the top, the brush nickel pulls on there. Microwave, you have kind of like the streamlined graystone, graystone hood. You know, it's not near as big and thick as what they used to be. They're going a lot slimmer, a lot more uh, European styling in some of the hoods. You also see the Everchill fridge freezer on here. This is a, uh, a 12 volt fridge, you know, so that way it can run right off your batteries. Um, you know, I've been told that you can use this with a couple batteries and some solar power and basically have this run almost nonstop. That being said, I am a little curious. Uh, well, there's a lock here, just so you know. I'm a little curious as to what this is, right? So you have a switch to turn it off. You know, you can turn it on. You can, uh, just like that, you can see, you know, boom, there it is. Light turns on, you're good to go. Cools down nice and quickly. Then you have this switch here to turn it off. I guess my thing is I'm not 100% certain why you would ever want to turn your fridge off. Um, maybe if you're hooked up to like the power, you know, like on the side of your house or something like that where you don't have 30 amp and you're just trying to load up the camper. I'm not sure. I guess let me know, right? Like what do you guys think? Do you, are you like, oh yes, this is exactly what I wanted? Um, you know, please let me know what the use for that is because I am curious. I've just never been in a situation when I'm out camping where I didn't want my fridge to function. Uh, right here is your thermostat. This, of course, uh, will control both your ducted AC as well as the ducted heat. You can just flip it right back and forth there. Pretty simple and easy to use. Making our way into the bathroom, starting off right down here, foot flush lever toilet. As far as the space, I actually have great space in here. I'm six foot tall, I have plenty of room for my legs. Same thing for my shoulders, you know, I'm not rubbing on this wall, which a lot of times happens. Also because of the cutout, not rubbing over here either. So uh, pretty good space. Even if you're taller, you know, as you can see, I still have plenty of room for my legs, which is awesome. Over to the side, good storage there. A little bit right down underneath, you have plumbing access. Uh, underneath that as well, some additional storage in the bottom, you know, maybe for some extra rolls of toilet paper, black tank chemicals, things like that. A little bit of countertop coming over to the side, which is great. Gives you a spot to put items. Of course, electrical outlet, mirrored medicine cabinet. It's an actual medicine cabinet, not a plastic one. And when I step foot into the shower here, again, I am six foot tall. Without the skylight, I am hitting the ceiling, just so you know. So if you're, you know, six foot or taller, um, you know, you're, you're probably gonna have to bend down in the shower because this is a vent fan. So I only have like an inch, you know, so maybe if you're 6'1", you can stand underneath here and it would still work. 
but any taller than that, you will be bending down in here. As far as space though, it's not awful. I mean, if I close the curtain a little bit, you can see here, if I turn sideways, my arm's brushing on a little bit, but not too terrible. Also, they kind of have like a, a faux brick in here, which, I mean, you know, obviously looks very fake, but it's better than nothing, right? I, I do like having some kind of design on there. Um, be curious to see how much harder it is, how much more maintenance it is, how much harder it is to clean, but I do like the aesthetic piece there. Making our way to the back, I guess I'll point this out real quick here on our way back. So this is going to be a, a big chunk of probably your clothes storage for the bunk room. Um, if you need it for pantry, you can do that, but chances are you're probably gonna need it for the kids' clothes. And then as we do make our way into the very back, you will see the three bunks. So we have two on this side here. You will notice that they have uh, kind of like foot lockers uh, on each one, which is nice, or you know, maybe you put your head up there. I, I don't know, I guess it kind of depends on how you wanna lay. But uh, you do have storage uh, at one side, which is nice, an emergency exit. See if we have access here. It does not look like it. That is screwed. So we'll take a look when we go outside, see if we have some storage on the uh, outside, but it does not look like we have access on the inside. Across the way, this bunk is a little bit wider than the other two, which is nice. Again, storage underneath. You have a spot to hook up your TV right in the, the main area. Your hookups are up top. Again, a little bit of covered storage there. And then some more again here. Plus, you have this. Now, I do like this. It, it's not huge, chances are. Whatever you hang in here is gonna touch the bottom, uh, but at least it does, it, it's, it looks like it's deep enough that it can actually fit a hanger. Far too often you get a hanging rod and the hangers are like this, right? Like they don't actually hang. I, I'm pretty sure that in here you can actually hang clothes, which will be nice. So you do, you know, between all the foot lockers, this right here and that extra storage, uh, you know, right across from the bathroom, you do have plenty of space for the kids' clothes. And again, if you want to divide this up, you want one of them to be like a linen closet for all your bath towels, or again, if you do need that pantry space, you may be able to utilize it there. And then we come out and take a look at the super slide. So U-shaped dinette. I'll take a seat here again, just to kind of show you the space, give you an idea. Um, the, the, the one complaint I have on the U dinette is that the table is a little tall for me. You know, I, I wish that the, the le legs would have been a little bit shorter. You can see how much space I have between my legs. I mean, you know, I'm not Arnold Schwarzenegger. My legs don't, you know, they're not quite that big. I don't need that much space. And it makes the, it makes the table high, which for little kids is going to be, you know, kind of problematic because it'll be up at their chin. Uh, that being said, I do like the fact that they cut this out around the side. <clears throat> Excuse me. It allows you to easily slide to the back if you need to do so again as far as space here as an adult it is a little tight um, you know if, if I was much bigger I would you know kind of be pinched in here as a kid though you know this is probably where you'll want them to be as far as space and seating um, it would be tight for four people right you can see here I'm on this side I'd have to have another person right here because of these cutouts that allow you to slide in it does take away from some of that you know, usable table space. And so having two plates here, it, you know, a guy my size would be pretty tough. Obviously you can have one on each end, but I would say three adults, maybe two adults, and then two kids on this side. Uh, it just depends on, on the size of your kiddos. The great thing about a U-shaped dinette though, folks, is that this does drop down into a big bed. So if you need the additional sleeping space, I mean, you can see, you know, when you take these cushions out, you have all this space here. You can easily sleep uh, two adults here, which is great. And then underneath, you have the storage, you have the swing open doors. Um, you know, this is oftentimes more convenient than having to take out the back cushions and lift up the bottom cushion to access it. So I do like having that. I do prefer manufacturers put some kind of uh, drawer or a uh, bin or something in there to pull out just because that way you don't have to get down your hands and knees. But again, this is still improved over having to lift up a cushion. And then in the, uh, also in the slide, you have your sofa. So this is a jackknife style sofa. Jackknife, of course, does drop down into a bed, but the main thing about a jackknife is all the storage you get underneath. This is why, uh, you know, this is the big advantage of having it over a trifold. There's a lot more storage. It does not make near the size of a trifold, so you know it's mainly kind of for uh, children to sleep on or if you just need to take like a quick nap. But it does have this, which is kind of convenient. You have the drop down armrest uh, slash cup holders kind of creates like a pseudo theater seating for you to watch TV. So because the TV is uh, located where it is at the entertainment center here, I would recommend getting a swing arm mount so that way you can swing it out and around. Yes, it will block the exit, but at least you'll get a better view to the TV. Uh, you know, again, in my opinion, definitely not necessary. You could do it flat, but uh, I'd probably get a swing arm. 
Of course, connections for that are right up top. You do see you have this hole, so that way you can feed uh, these connections through to the other side. We'll take a look at that when we go into the bedroom. Multimedia center here. You have your AV jacks to plug into the TV. This does have the HDMI port on it. Also, you have some storage underneath. Nothing huge, but a little bit there. And you will notice the brick wall or, or brick looking wall, right? Um, you know, I'm not totally in love with it. I don't hate it. I'm glad they did something where it's not just the, the plain wall board. Uh, you know, it adds a little bit. I, I personally think that uh, out of the other manufacturers I've seen, I think a shiplap is a better look or maybe like a little bit um, kind of whitewashed brick. But, you know, again, I, I don't hate it. I'm glad that they put something there. Making our way into the bedroom, you see the queen bed located here in the center. You have nightstands on both sides with electrical outlets, USB port here. You see the mirrored wardrobe, hanging rod going across the top. Of course, you have a shelf here, light underneath if you need to uh, do a little bit of light reading in bed. And as I mentioned, right over on this side, you can mount a TV there. And then, of course, your cords will come right through there as I showed you on the other side. Now that we've seen the inside, let's take a look at some of the outside features on the 2020 Shasta 310K. Up front is your power tongue jack, of course, making it easier to connect and disconnect from your tow vehicle. You also see that you have the light at night for a little uh, added visibility there. And then directly behind that are your 20 pound propane tanks with a cover. You have diamond plating coming up the front, helping to protect that front end from some of the rocks and debris that may get thrown up by your tow vehicle. And coming around to this side is the pass-through. There is a covered hinge so that we don't have a bunch of rust coming down your door. And if you take a look inside, you will see that it is a decent sized pass-through, mainly because it shares the same space that you have access to underneath the bed. So you have a couple different access points. You have the camp side, the off-camp side, and then underneath the bed all into that same area. The power awning on here, just touch a button to roll that out. Same thing to go right back in. There is an LED light strip that you can use no matter what position the awning is in. If it's fully retracted or extended, you can still use that. The entrance here has the LCI or Lippert solid steps, and just like the name implies, they are exactly that. You don't get the springboard effect when you're walking up and down them. You have the aluminum treads, which aren't going to rust, the grip tape, and the larger grab handle here for added control when entering or exiting the RV. Making our way back a little bit further, you'll see a couple electrical outlets there. Your fresh tank fill. If you're going somewhere and you don't have city water, you want to make sure to fill up the fresh tank when you get there. Uh, make our way back a little bit further here, you have the aluminum alloy wheels, which are uh, pretty, you know, and again, because they're that uh, aluminum alloy, they won't rust on you. And then coming back a little bit further, you have the outside kitchen. And I really like this kitchen. I think they did a good job personally. You have the sink over to the side, you have nice prep space. You have the, uh, the storage right up top, LED light if you have to get in there at night. A couple of drawers, you know, very uh, large usable drawers underneath. And it's still a nice thermal foil countertop. You know, a lot of manufacturers here would have went to a T-Mold to save a little bit of money, but it is still a nice countertop. And you have the bigger refrigerator, which, you know, this is the, the thing I want most in my outside kitchen. So that way you can have more beverages out here. Um, you know, if you need the uh, like condiments, stuff like that, it's a great spot for it. Coming around to the back, you'll see the square tubular bumper with the end caps on there. It gives you a great spot in which you can store the sewer hose. You'll also see your spare tire mounted to that. Also, if you drop down underneath, I do want to point out here, this one, it's kind of tough to see, but it does have a fully enclosed and insulated underbelly. And also, I do just want to let you know you have the propane quick connect as well. So uh, I know this one doesn't have a grill or anything, but that just allows you to bring your favorite grill, hook it up right there, you're good to go. Right up top is backup camera prep. If you want backup camera, having the prep makes it easier to install, meaning it'll save you money on labor. Coming around to the side, uh, this is kind of a missed opportunity in my opinion. I really wish they would have had some kind of storage here. Obviously they had it uh, screwed shut. I'm not sure what they put in there. It's obviously not a furnace or anything, so we don't have a vent. Uh, I didn't see an electrical panel, I don't think, when I was in there. So uh, I'm not really sure why they didn't put something here. I, I personally wish they would have. Uh, but you will see right there is your city water inlet. You also have your 30 amp power cord inlet there. And if we come all the way up to the front, the last thing I do want to point out, cable and satellite inlets are up here, which, you know, for cable, it's probably a little far. You'll have to make sure you have a long coax cable uh, to hook it up from the post in the back. Also, if you want solar, that'll be located here. Simply buy the portable panels, plug it in right there, and it'll trickle charge your battery. All right, folks, and that wraps it up. Again, this is the 2020 Shasta 310K. 
If you're interested in this travel trailer and you would like price and availability, simply click on the link in the description. Also, let me know in the comments section what you guys think, what you think they nailed, what you think they missed, what you think they could improve, or what you would change if you were able to design it. Thanks again for watching. I'm Ian Baker, and let's go camping.